Hi everyone, it's Kate here. Um, on the 6th of April 2020, the Arise Consortium held a Twitter chat on the topic of disability and COVID-19. And we were joined by many members of the public, but also a panel of expert tweeters. Um, this summary relates to what was said about barriers to healthcare related to disability and COVID-19. We heard that um, people with disabilities frequently face barriers that prevent them from accessing care and treatment. And these barriers can be both structural and they can be attitudinal. And in times of crisis, it can become even more difficult uh, to access care due to lack of accommodations and disruption of routine health service provision. Um, so Gordon Rattray shared with us that people with disabilities are excluded from society on a daily basis because of physical, communication, attitudinal and institutional barriers. And this is worse in humanitarian emergencies. So it's not um, COVID-19 that makes people vulnerable per se. It's the barriers in society. Um, as services that are considered less essential are shut down to try and release healthcare workers to support the response to the pandemic, we may see a reduction in rehabilitation services. This may hamper recovery for some people. And tweeters were also concerned about the availability of medicines and medicine supply chains for medicines such as anticonvulsants if the health system's severely compromised by the outbreak. Participants also said that restrictive policy measures such as lockdowns and curfews might interrupt home care services and the flow of other essentials such as food into households. Um, also, it may lead to police brutality about, uh, against people with disabilities who have to leave their home to survive. So as the IDDC said in a tweet, um, that quarantines or very restrictive programmes may result in disruption of services vital for people with disabilities. And this includes food and healthcare, uh, water and sanitation, communications. And as a result, it would undermine their rights and capacity to cope with the crisis. So we heard that People with disabilities face an ongoing struggle in realising their right to health. And this is influenced by things like their gender, geography, social location, societal priorities and attitudes. You know? And this intersects with disability types to create inequities in health service access. So this isn't new, but it's really highlighted during a crisis like COVID-19. The disability innovation said in a tweet, a reduction in transport and social care services, prioritization of health services and huge demand on delivery could build further barriers and widen gaps to care. We heard that there are structural barriers and these include inaccessible communications, for example, a lack of sign language, braille or pictorial or simple language health communication products. Other barriers there are health facilities that are difficult to access and that could be because they're far away or because there are bad roads or poor transport to these healthcare centres. Um, and we heard that there are financial barriers. Um, because of treatment costs. You know, people have limited money to pay for either the services themselves or the transport to actually get to them. So uh, Dilmarad Yusupov in a tweet said um, that there are a lack of livelihood opportunities. He's talking about Uzbekistan here. Only 2% of people with disabilities are employed. There's very small disability benefits of $50 per month. And this doesn't allow people access to quality healthcare. So 
although the government says that primary health care is free, you do need money to actually access it. We heard a lot about attitudinal barriers, you know, particularly of health care providers, which are a problem at times. So um, Hadja Wuri explained, in some contexts, the disabled are seen, but they're not seen. Um, on a more hopeful note, it was thought that the COVID-19 pandemic could be an opportunity to raise the importance of addressing challenges and barriers lived daily by people with disabilities. It could be a mechanism to communicate and demonstrate challenges to people in power. So Dr. Anna Ruddock in a tweet said, there's been inadequate investment in biomedical research. There are harmful guidelines. There's the oppression of invalidation, and this is compounded by patriarchy. But she says, could COVID-19 mark a turning point as people in power get a glimpse of our worlds? And I think this is a nice place to leave our blog on barriers to access to care, thinking of the future and how we can work collectively to make a very positive change. This is only one blog in a series and uh, another of my colleagues will be narrating those. But it's been lovely to communicate with you. This is Kate Hawkins for the Arise Consortium.